Hi, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update on Tuesday, April 13th. My name is Ashley Edwards, and with me are Vince Desitel, Lee Falk, and Jason Holmes. We are going to kind of swap up the order of stuff today if you normally follow along. We're going to let Jason go first with his update for the Northeast region and all of our market reports. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Good to see everybody uh, this afternoon. Lee, Vince, Ashley. Um, uh, appreciate Ashley putting this together for us each week. Uh, so I'll start off with just a, uh, a brief update on uh, uh, pasture conditions, field conditions in uh, northeast Louisiana. Uh, so as Lee can probably appreciate, this time of year it's just like one cold front after another when we just try to catch the dry spells in between the cold fronts. Uh, it seems like every time we have one come down, it either brings thunderstorms or rains with it. Uh, we had another round of some pretty severe weather this past week pass through the area, so it's just, it's just one after another. It seems like we get one about every week. Um, Baylage producers in my area now are in full swing, uh, so uh, it's just a matter of trying to get in there in those little drying spells between those cold fronts. Uh, those guys will basically be doing a race with Mother Nature, uh, trying to, uh, to get that ryegrass up as timely as possible. Um, as we get further out in age, further uh, into uh, the spring, uh, the nutritional quality of that is just going to start taking a hard nose dive. Uh, so they're they're just in a race with Mother Nature now, trying to get that up. Um, I guess I would encourage folks who have incorporated cool season annuals into their grazing systems that uh, now is the time to start considering. <clears throat> Uh, removal of that crop, uh, so either as mechanical means or through increased grazing pressure. Um, uh, the uh, warm season perennials are going to be uh, greening up or are greening up rapidly, uh, so you need to start making the decisions on how you're going to get those cool season annuals off the top of that, allowing that sunlight in, that soil to heat up uh, so that those perennial grasses can, uh, uh, can come out in a timely manner. Uh, just remember that if you don't do that, you're just going to delay uh, the green up of those Bermuda grasses and Bahia grasses. So you need to be taking those into consideration now. Uh, the biggest weed that I've started seeing uh, emerging here lately, uh, we have a big problem with cypress weeds in our pastures and hay meadows up here. Uh, they have to be controlled. If they're not controlled, they just get out of hand. Uh, I've seen a lot of those, so they'll start bushing up from that rootstock uh, left over from last year. Um, so make sure that you're scouting your fields regularly and, uh, and getting a handle on those cypress weeds now because you can save yourself a good bit of cost per acre in terms of herbicide cost if, um, uh, if you do get out there and scout those, scout those weeds and try to get them, uh, get them controlled in an early manner. Uh, moving into the market, so um, um, grilling season has arrived. Um, I know we did a little bit of grilling this weekend, talked to a lot of my friends. They were grilling this weekend, so we're into that time of the season uh, that, uh, that everybody's wanting to get out. Um, uh, sunshine, warm air, uh, get out and enjoy the grill on the weekends. Uh, so with that, we're seeing normal seasonal improvements in beef demand. Um, and most likely, our fed prices are being driven by expectations that that beef demand is going to remain strong. Uh, well into the grilling season. Uh, with that, uh, correspondingly so, choice box beef cutout values uh, saw a $20 per hundred weight uh, rise in the past week. So those uh, those choice box <coughs> beef cutout values were increasing a little bit week over week, and then they took a big jump this past week. And, but uh, and we would expect that this time of year uh, with the folks uh, that are getting out and grilling, they want those choice cuts. Uh, to put on the grill for that good eating experience. The National Weekly Cattle and Beef Summary uh, report showed an estimated 641,000 head harvested for the week ending April the 9th. Uh, that's 32,000 head more than the previous week, but taking into consideration the previous week was an Easter week, uh, so that was a short week. Uh, so naturally, we would expect that harvest to be higher. Dressed weights were at 830 pounds. Uh, fed prices in the south were primarily three to four dollars higher than the last week, and in the north they were primarily four to five dollars higher than the last week. Uh, in the five area feeding region, fed steer negotiated cash sales ranged 118 to 125, 
So if you split that, you're about $4 higher than a week ago. Uh, that was on a confirmed 96,775 head. Uh, most recent futures quotes on that class of cattle uh, showed June down 42 cents at 122.15, August down 37 cents at 122.02, and October down 15 cents at 125.55. As you go out a little bit further than that, you'll start seeing prices getting closer to 130. Um, but uh, as most of us, we don't have a whole lot of uh, faith in the futures market, so I'm not going to talk about those right now because that's a long way out. Uh, five to 600 pound steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold between 148.34 and, one, uh, and 158.15. Uh, so that's steady to $10 lower than the previous week. Uh, seven to 800 pound feeder steers, medium and large ones and twos, sold between 133.50 and 135.54. So that was steady to $7 higher than the previous week. Uh, most recent quotes showed May trading uh, down two cents at 149.60, August up 65 cents at 160.60, and September up 62 at 161.50. So uh, yet again, we're seeing those uh, uh, those feeder type cattle, those seven and eight weights uh, are continuing to climb in value. So just to put something else into perspective here, so we had a large uh, video offering of cattle uh, this past week. Uh, so I pulled the uh, reports for just Louisiana cattle uh, in that video offering. So those five uh, to six weights averaged $1.50 and the seven to eight weights averaged $1.41. Um, now you can get up there, some of those um, um, programmed up cattle uh, had all the bells and whistles on them. Uh, they were naturally eight to 10 cents higher. Uh, some of them um, uh, that, uh, that didn't have very many programs might've been a little bit lower, but $1.50 on a 500 to 600 pound and $1.41 on a seven to 800 pound. Not bad at all. That's pretty decent money on those classes of cattle. Uh, lean coal cows were uh, sent to two cent higher from the previous week. So I think that's like the fourth week in a row. Our coal cows have continued to climb. So right now we're sitting at 56 cents to 65 cents a pound on those lean coal cows. Uh, moving into our feedstuffs, uh, soybean meal, up eight dollars and twenty cents a ton at four twenty six forty. Uh, soybean hull steady at one fifty five. Cotton seed meal up five dollars a ton at four sixty. Whole cotton seed up ten dollars a ton at three forty. Rice brand steady at one forty. Corn gluten feed meal sixty percent is steady at seven thirty a ton. DDGs were finally below $200 a ton on those, so they're down $7.50 at $197.50. And corn is up $0.21 cents a bushel at $4.95 a bushel, so that is two weeks in a row uh, that we are below $5 a bushel on corn. Um, I, I know that, that uh, the folks that are out there that have got, uh, got corn still in the bin or putting up uh, or got corn planted, that may not be ideal for them, but for us on the livestock side, we're happy to see it fall back below uh, $5 a bushel. So again, uh, good to be with y'all this afternoon. Ashley, I want to turn it back over to you. All right, thank you. I think I was at the wrong house this weekend because this is the first weekend and I don't know how long that we did not light a grill. And you said you grilled. I saw Vince's picture yesterday and I'm really jealous. So we had our air fryer going. That's about as good as it got this weekend. Um, I'm going to turn it on over to Lee for our update in the Northwest region. Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be with y'all today. And uh, as Jason stated, it's storms have been in uh, the forecast and we've gone from one to another with very little space in between, it seems like. Had two different systems roll through in the last week or so uh, with varying levels of, of, of damage. I would say we, we dodged a bullet in the northwest part of the state. We had a uh, had a couple of tornadoes back the last system, but uh, it all starts running together after some time. You can't remember if it was 
this this week or last week and i'm not meaning to make light of it but uh this has been a very very active spring uh storm season for us up here in the northwestern part of the state um the pasture conditions are good ryegrass is good you can tell that you know we, we've had some uh fairly cool nights and these cold fronts naturally bring in those cooler nights there for a couple of days before temper, uh, temperatures moderate. And you can see that effect a little bit on some of these warm season uh, forages that are trying to poke their head out. But uh, for the most part, things are looking good, especially ryegrass. Clover's looking just, just excellent. Uh, but as far as soil moisture goes, of course, these storm systems bring in lots of rain. Uh, so I was a little surprised. I, I, I've got to confess that I don't check the national drought monitor as regularly as what I should. Uh, that, that's one of those websites you tend to visit a lot during the summertime and, and during the winter and spring, you, you tend to uh, fall off of as far as checking it. But I, I, I did take a look at it today and was a little bit surprised that, uh, that there are uh, some areas on the southern end of, of northwest uh, Louisiana that are in a, a D0 drought. And there are some parishes over Jason's Way in northeast region in a D1. So that that's kind of alarming to see. Anytime you start seeing some color in that drought monitor this time of year, that doesn't bode well going into the to growing season. We'll hope that it's just kind of an anomaly that uh, we'll be getting some more, uh, more significant moisture in those areas, but it's definitely something that we're going to have to keep a watch on. Same thing goes on, on the western part of the state. Uh, is in the eastern, there's a lot of baleage being baled. Talked to a guy yesterday that said that they've been at it hard uh, other than when it was actively raining for the last eight days, trying to put some up here and there and, and everywhere. So there's a lot of baleage being put up uh, uh, in, in, in that regards. The folks that got dry hay or the produced dry hay don't have a mechanism to wrap it or don't have the capability to wrap. They're still on the sidelines for the most part. You keep uh, keep waiting for the first person to try to dry uh, dry bale some hay, and you know it's coming. Uh, so so, but that that is in the works. Uh, cattle works have slowed down a little bit. Still got some people out there that are trying to to clean up a little bit and, and get some cattle worked uh, and, and so on and so forth. We've seen uh, quite a bit of movement towards market as far as calves goes and some yearlings uh, on ryegrass. I think we talked about that a little bit in the report. That's still going on. These numbers are still still running pretty high at local livestock markets. And they're starting to get a, a small trickle, I guess you would say, of some early fall born true calves uh, start making their way to town. Uh, nothing makes it, nothing makes the decision easier on marketing calves than uh, in higher prices, as Jason's alluded to in his portion of the report. Uh, so there are some people that, while most of us try to wait and we try to wean that 500 or better pound calf, uh, uh, there are some folks that are. Uh, seeing these light calf prices and, and seeing dollar signs and uh, waiting for the other shoe to fall, I guess you would say, and expecting the market to go down that are unloading some of those lighter calves. And it's met with good demand, uh, especially amongst folks that are doing uh, summer grazing out west and uh, uh, north and, and so on and so forth. Um, I just wanted to make a quick plug about our YouTube channel. That's LSU Ag Center Livestock. And that's where we've got a lot of uh, a lot of these record all of these recordings, I guess, are on there. If you missed a past news update, uh, specifically if you have a hard time going to sleep at night and you need somebody to put you to sleep, then turn in and listen to my section, and it'll it'll uh, better than uh, Ambien or any of those other uh, prescription drugs there. But do take advantage of those that channel if you hadn't been there yet then just uh, weave your way on over there and take a look at some of the videos. Uh, Ashley's got all of our Beef Brunch educational series up there. And, and it, 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 the reason why I thought to include in this report is I was talking to a gentleman this morning uh, looking to get in on marketing beef directly uh, to the consumer. 
and was wondering about getting a private label and all the regulations and so on and so forth. And it was just, I, I said, I just so happened to have a video on that. And I was able to direct him towards our past Beef Brunch uh, series that covered that. So uh, along with some other information, just if you hadn't checked that out, just just make a point to, uh, to, to take a look. And I'm going to end up by saying uh, it sure is good to, that uh, starting to see some more in-person activities and, and it feels like life is returning to normal at maybe at a slower pace than what we would like, but it, it sure is nice to see signs of that. Uh, we got our beef and forage field day coming up on April 29th. I think Ash is going to discuss that. Maybe she will uh, here, here in just a minute in more depth than I am. But uh, our beef and forage field day at the Hill Farm will be April 29th. And uh, Ashley will probably talk about that, as I said. But also uh, seeing emails about regional horse shows being advertised and, and uh, even some spring livestock shows outside of our what we view as our traditional spring livestock shows. I think the State Fair is putting on a, a beef and dairy show on May the 1st and 2nd. So if you've got kids or grandkids that are showing livestock, uh, amble on over to the State Fair website. I think they've got all the information in there on that. And uh, it is open to other states if we do have any uh, Mississippi folks or Texans or Arkansans on here as well. Maybe that's something you can take advantage of as well. So I'm going to end it up there and... Uh, and wish y'all a good day and let us know if you have any questions. Ashley, that's all I got. Sorry, I'm trying to write two screens and I couldn't get back to my to my mic. Um, I'll go ahead and just add the only thing that I had to add on to that field day um, was just I think we are asking for RSVPs. Is that correct, Lee? So I'll include Lee's um, email in the descriptions for this, and you can just shoot him an email and say, yes, I plan on coming. Um, that way we've got enough lunches and everything uh, planned. But we have, um, there's going to be a market update. We're going to talk about weed control options, um, overseeding multiple annual forage species, um, considerations for using clovers, stalking, uh, stocking rates, and then talk a little bit about cattle uh, docility or temperament. So. That's what we have planned, and I'll just second what Lee said. I'm glad we're able to have some in-person events. We had Advanced Master Cattlemen down at um, Dean Lee last Friday, moving forward with some of our field days, and it does feel good to be able to actually see people and speak to people in person. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Vince, for our update in Central and South Louisiana. Sure. Thanks, Ashley, and thank you guys for, for being with us today. Uh, there's only one word to sum it up here in Central part of state, and as we move further south, it's wet just wet. Uh, we've, we've had, you know, ranging from an inch to two and three up to six inches in areas uh, with these fronts uh, passing through. Like Lee said, two in the last week, unfortunately, we had an F3 tornado touchdown on Saturday, um, not far from here in the Opelousas area. I was talking to one of the local farmers on the phone uh, before getting onto this call. They said it actually picked up a house and set it on top of a utility pole the family was in the house and they woke up with the utility pole through the house. So, um, but nobody was hurt, but unfortunately there was a fatality uh, associated with that tornado. Uh, but it was in a rural setting, uh, unfortunately in a, a populated little area community in a rural setting. So they, they had some injuries and, and a fatality. So uh, our prayers are with those folks. Um, but, you know, the, you know, the pasture conditions as far as, you know, here in the central part of the state, uh, ryegrass, you know, the cooler temperatures at night are still keeping it. Uh, somewhat from wanting to see, uh, but today we're hitting 85 degrees uh, with uh, two days of rain expected tomorrow and Wednesday with uh, an anticipated inch or more accumulation. So uh, that's just insult to injury. Um, you know, as, as the calf market improves, uh, as Lee alluded to, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty easy to make that decision when you got those calves pushing 450 to 550. It's pretty easy to get them going on a trailer and, and not have a second thought about what's going on. Uh, I know Dean Lee sold some calves last week, or they loaded some calves out that they had marketed on Superior uh, that were 850, and they brought I think a dollar 34 and a half. So uh, those are some those are some big steers that you know they did really well with, and and they were real pleased with those. Uh, but as far as here in the local markets, uh, we've had a number of uh, stocker cow sales here lately. 
uh, and you know the good cattle are still bringing good money and and the, you know the you know the I guess the lower end cattle you know not doing so well but um, it's still there's a lot of there's a lot of foragers out there for our producers uh, we, we're getting some uh, with the calf market kind of improving we're getting a lot of calls on uh, you know fertilizer for our uh, summer forages and a lot of that's going out right now a lot of herbicides are going out uh, we're getting you know we, with this warmer temperatures we're seeing you know a lot of horse nettle a lot of thistle you know those they're starting to poke, poke their ugly heads up so um, we've we just been getting an abundance of calls in that area uh, market's good we still got people working working cattle around the mud holes uh, believe it or not uh, we, we you know spring cabin in, in the southern part of the state is a little bit earlier than the northern part of the state a lot of cabin goes on in December and January but some of those herds are getting work currently and uh, moving forward you know it's 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 been it's been real positive as far as the forest situation but as far as everything else going on it's so darn wet we, we can't hardly get much accomplished because um, you know our row cropping system is set back greatly i mean we got probably 70 to 80 percent of the corn planted and, and the, the rest is waiting in the balance we got a little touch on planting grain sorghum last week and we're getting into final planting dates for that so uh it's, it's beginning to be a problem but we uh you know fortunately uh, you know you know the markets have been good and, and you know people are very optimistic and hopefully we can get a better stretch of weather and after this two days of rain coming up and uh next week they're calling for not, 40 degree night so we here we go again so um who knows who knows where where we're headed but hopefully we get a warm up soon that's all i've got all right i'm just going to add um i guess just a couple little notes so lee and i were visiting with a lot of the guys at the hill farm a while ago and we're talking about getting ready for our breeding season and I know that a lot of y'all probably already have bulls out, but um, just a reminder to double check all of your calving equipment, um, go back through your health, your herd health, vaccination protocols, deworming, whatever you need to do, meet with your veterinarian for that if you're not sure exactly what your herd needs. Um, but the main thing that I wanted to just kind of touch on for just a second is you are able to, I guess, increase some of your record keeping and things like that um, in terms of breeding dates through some estrus detection markers. So I know when we teach the AI class, we really talk about checking for heat and, and know, obviously, when you're breeding, if you're going to be artificially inseminating. But you can make use of some of those detection aids like estrotech patches and things like that um, to be able to actually kind of tell exactly when those cows were mounted, when they were bred. And just kind of help improve your records in that sense of, of things. Um, also, too, we did, a, as Lee was mentioning, you know, go back to some of our webinars before. We did a talk on estra synchronization for natural service. And I think that was last October. And just talks about how you can tighten up some of your breeding dates and then subsequently your calving dates for those. So if you have any questions on any of that or anything that we've said, just a reminder, you can reach out to us. Um, our contact information is on the video. If you're listening to this in podcast form, you can reach out to me. My email's in the description, and I can put you in touch with some of these other guys if we need to. Um, a few events uh, coming up and some that I guess have already happened. So I've mentioned the beginner cattleman program that we have going on um, that might not be necessarily fit for some of you that are listening to it. It might be. Um, but if you know anybody that's interested in it, um, I've had some people call me today actually for it. So I'm trying to get that registration into me by this Friday. Um, so if you know someone interested or if you're interested, uh, reach out to me. Again, my contact information's in the descriptions um, for the video and the podcast. We're trying to get a head count. That way we know that we can go ahead and move forward with this particular program. There's information for it on our website, but I'll link all of that again um, in the description for this. We've had two virtual field days recently. I've mentioned them in previous news updates. We had the Acadiana Beef and Forage Field Day as well as the Dean Lee Beef and Forage Field Day. I'll put both of those links in the description as well. There's a handful of videos um, related to beef and forage production for each of those particular field days. And then the last thing I think to mention um, is going to be our Beef Brunch webinar. Our monthly webinar for this month is actually the same day today that this um, News updates going out, so Tuesday, April 13th. So Jason and Lee are coming on and talking about best management practices and forage harvesting. So if you miss the news, um, I'm sorry, if you missed the webinar, if you're watching this news update a little bit later, you can go to that YouTube channel that Lee mentioned, LSU Ag Center Livestock. 
You can go to lsuagcenter.com forward slash beef brunch and see all of those there as well. Um, so they're going to go through that. I'll try to have the recorded version up, um, I guess, by the following Monday. I can't think of my dates in my head. Um, but if we're watching this on Tuesday the 13th, it'll be the next Monday is usually when I get those webinars uh, up and recorded. So I think that that's all I have for y'all. Uh, we hope that you have a great week. We hope that you are staying safe during all these storms because this is a very busy and a very crazy time of year. And we will be back with y'all in a couple of weeks for our next news update.